how those lids are, because this is, well, I'm just going to speak, okay? So this is it. So you know how those lids on the Starbucks cups, they're white, right? And so if you wear lipstick, they get all over the lid. And so then I find myself in meetings if I'm the only woman, and that's kind of, and so I keep taking the lid off and having my cup out so that I don't have that big lipstick mark on the lid. <laughs> so I said, can we do something about the color of the lid? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. The first order of business, Starbucks lids. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor fake whore. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, doke party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? So... As you guys, well, some of you guys know, I am from Miami, Florida, and I am first generation Haitian. Okay. My folks came here on a work visa, shut up shop, had me, had my sister, and then got their citizenship later on. Now, growing up in Miami, we had a lot of, uh, Yanks. We call them Yanks back then or foundational black Americans, they did not like Haitians back then. So they will pick on us. They'll uh, bully us, pick a fight, taunt us. There was a rumor in Miami that says Haitians eat cat, right? So of course we will take offense to it. I never seen nobody in my family eat cat before. None of that, right? But still the stigma the stereotype stuck on us. Oh, these Haitian eat cat. You can't eat in Haitian. So we had to go through that. We had to fight our way through high school with that damn rumor. Now, I've been a Haiti before. I've been a Haiti before. Uh, I was an adult. This is uh, when I was 25, 26, 1995 or six or something like that. My grandmother fell ill, so I had to go see her, right? I didn't stay in no resort. I didn't stay in no hotel. I stayed in the village of Oka, okay? I had a rental car. I went up and down the country, the hillside, the waterfalls, the beach, every little city in between. Okay. Now I've seen some weird dogs, some weird little dogs. Like you don't know what breed that is. I seen sickly cows, malnourished horses. There's one thing I've never seen in Haiti. A cat. What? Yeah. I never seen a tabby in Haiti. It didn't, I didn't put two to two together until recently. All right. Now, Springfield, Ohio has a problem right now. They have an influx of Haitian immigrants in this town of 58,000. 58,000 all of a sudden got 20,000 of Haitian immigrants because of Biden Harris administration. Now, the folks, the residents had enough. So they went to a town hall meeting and let's take a listen. Kind of odd that like a guy like me has to come out from doing what I do on a daily basis to have fun. Cause I see what's going on in these streets. And I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits and like, and I'm getting out here every day and I'm broadcasting this and you guys are just sitting up there in suits. Or like I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into... Uh, they flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how, like, y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like, who's getting paid from this. I feel like... I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping... They, you got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me tonight... FaceTime me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. 
And I don't even want to, like, seem like I'm coming down on the immigrants because it's the people that's bringing them down here. Because wherever they're at, that's what they're used to, bro. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them. Now, you know it's bad when a yank comes on and talk bad about your driving. Okay? Now, we have this other lady here. She's an older white lady. And she's talking about squatters. Much. And I'm done with what I'm seeing. It is so unsafe in my neighborhood anymore. I have the homeless that were trying to camp out, and I have, I have made concessions with them, and I try to help them the best I can to keep them from trying to squat on my property. But it is so unsafe. I have men that cannot speak English in my front yard screaming at me throwing mattresses in my front yard, throwing trash in my front yard. And I can't, I look at me, I weigh 95 pounds. I couldn't defend myself if I had to. My husband is elderly. And last night after living in this home for 45 years, he said, Noel, guess what? It's time to pack up and move. He said, we can't do this anymore. He said, it's killing both of us mentally. I don't understand what you expect of us as citizens. I mean, I, I understand they're here under temporary protected status and you're protecting them. And I understand that our city services are overwhelmed and understaffed. But who's protecting us? If we're protecting them, who's protecting me? I want out of this town. I am sorry. Please give me a reason to stay. Thank you. That is why also, starting with our administration, we gave TPS, temporary protected status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended temporary protected status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. <laughs> That's not the worst part about it. That is not the worst part. These the Haitians, and I'm not saying all of them, but some of them are literally like going to parks, you know, how we feed the ducks or whatever. They are taking ducks and cutting their heads off and taking them home to eat them, um, to cook them and eat them. Um, there was a neighbor uh, that uh, was missing her cat. She couldn't find her cat. One day she came home from work. As soon as she stepped out of her car, looked towards a neighbor's house where Haitians lived uh, and saw her cat hanging from a branch like you do like a deer when you're when you're field dressing or butchering uh, and they were covering it carving the cat up to eat uh, they've been doing this to dogs they've been doing it at a uh, Snyder Park with the ducks and the geese this is this is Harris and Biden's um, they flew these people in to Ohio I know you people in Miami are looking at me and you probably frowned upon me, you know, pushing this rumor that Haitian eat shot bouillon. Y'all know what that is, right? Shot bouillon. Yes. What did you do? Why'd you kill the cat? Smile for me. Smile, what did you do? Go like this. Did you eat that cat? Did you eat it? No, why'd you kill it? Did you guys see all this? No, we pulled up and she was just laying there with it. Did you see her eating it? Eating it. She was eating it? Yeah, yeah. she was. Can you call the Humane Society to see if they'll come pick this cat up? It's deceased. Now, if you go anywhere in suburbia America, any neighborhood, you'll probably find a family of geese just walling around minding their business. Nobody mess with the geese or the ducks, right? You probably will get some crackers and bread and feed them by the lake and just talk to them, whatever, keep it moving. These Haitians are going over to the parks, snatching up geese, beheading them, Defeather them and having them on their plates. Yeah. So nobody told these Haitians that you don't have to kidnap dogs and cats, ducks and geese. You can go to the food bank. All right. We got enough processed food 
for all you guys. You want some processed cheese? Go to the food bank. You want some gluten in your, in your, in your bread? Go to the food bank. All right. You want some sugary drinks for your diabetes? Go to the food bank. You don't have to kidnap ducks and dogs, cats and geese. All right. Leave those things alone. Go to the food bank. You want some GMO? Go to the food bank. There's plenty enough in America. Now you got these crazy cat ladies asking Donald Trump to save the cats. The irony. Now all of a sudden these crazy cat ladies are asking Donald Trump and JD Vance to save my cats. The fuck? <laughs> you got Peter. Peter don't like Donald Trump because Donald Trump refused to have a dog at the White House. And Peter don't like that. But now Peter is coming around and saying, hey, Trump, can you save the pooch? <laughs> the fucking irony. See how easy that thing turns? J.D. Vance call you crazy cat ladies. Now you want Donald Trump to come save Tabby. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Man, so tomorrow is a big night. We have the clicker here of the countdown of the big debate between the prosecutor versus the felon. Yeah, the prosecutor knows his type. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. You got a problem with me, Donald? Say it to my face. Because as the saying goes, if you got something to say... as a prosecutor. Yeah. Can't wait for tomorrow. And I hope to God that Donald Trump brings this topic up about the crazy cat ladies are now missing their cats because of these Haitian immigrants. <laughs> anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. If you guys got any value out my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell Kamala I said hi. <laughs> Meow. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you crazy cat ladies, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs>